When the closed season arrives, I always really look forward to lure fishing on canals. There are over 2,000 miles of them that crisscross the country, and you can course fish on many of them throughout the closed season. And when the rivers are closed, canals can be a great place to target pike, perch, and zander. Today, we're fishing on the Grand Union Canal, which is the longest canal in the country. It starts down in London and it works its way all the way through the Midlands and breaks up into various branches going off to Birmingham, Leicester and other places as well. And on this particular stretch we've got the chance of catching pike, perch and zander. So there's three different species that we're likely to catch today. The two most common are perch and zander but there's always the chance of a pike too. The great thing about canals are that they're great places to try a lot of different tactics as well. So today I'm going to really mix it up. I'm going to try jigging, drop shotting, um, crankbaits as well. And hopefully if I cover plenty of water and choose my lures correctly, we should be able to put a few fish on the bank. Well I've got the first fish of the day in the net and it wasn't what I was expecting it to be actually, it's actually turned out to be a little pike. But it's the first bite of the day, first fish in the net. It took a mini fry in the fire tiger colour, rigged on a 3.5 gram jig head. And I just made a, a short cast along the margins, it's quite deep just along the edge here, and I just let the jig fall to the bottom, gave it a couple of hops and then bang. I actually thought it was a zander at first, but it came up to the surface and uh, I got a bit of a shock actually because I haven't caught many pike along this section. This is probably actually the hardest species to catch along here so it would be great if we could get pike, perch and zander in the same day. So I'm going to put this one back now and we're going to keep on fishing. Well we've just moved down a few yards from where I caught the first fish of the day and I've just done some fan casting opposite that barge over there, then did a quick cast along the bank and I had another hit and it's turned out to be another pike. So um, yeah, probably the most uncommon of the three predatory species you find in the canal along here. But um, it's nice to get some action, but hopefully we'll catch some perch and zander later on and make it a grand slam. When lure fishing on small canals like this, I'm not really out to catch big fish. It's just more about having fun and getting a few bites, really. So I'm not using massive lures. The biggest lures I tend to use on canals are around three inches in length. If I'm fishing a bigger canal than the Grand Union, then I might go for something bigger, but this is a very small, narrow canal, and generally I use quite small lures. You can often end up walking quite a few miles in a day because the, I mean, the Grand Union especially is a really long canal. So I like to travel really light and take a maximum of two rods really. So the first of those rods will kind of be like the all rounder. So the one that can fish jigs, crankbaits, spinners, chatterbaits, and a lot of other different types of lures as well. So for that, I like to use the twitch and jig so it's 6 foot 11 and casts between 3 to 14 grams. Now most of the time I'm using lures that are lighter than 14 grams on canals like this one, but I do like the extra length that this rod has because it helps get over bankside vegetation. But it's also got a really sensitive tip, so it's ideal for detecting really finicky bites. The second rod I'll have with me will be set up with a drop shot rig. So for that I like to use a rod with a much softer tip which will help me also detect really finicky bites, but also allow me to fish a little bit slower as well and more delicately. So for drop shotting, I like to use the Prism drop shot rod, which is also six foot 11, which is a nice length for when I want to cast to the far bank and sort of drag the drop shot weight along the bottom. And also it's a nice length for fishing in the margins as well. So what I like to do is stand back from the margins because if I'm standing really close to the bank, then it's increasing the chance of me spooking fish that are sitting right tight to the margins. So I like to keep back as far as possible and have the tip of the rod almost touching the bank. Because I like to fish really light on these small canals, 
I'm matching the really light rods with fairly small reels as well. So on the Twitch and Jig, I'm using a 2500 size prism, which is spooled up with 0.13 millimeter jig silk. And on my drop shotting outfit, I've got a 1000 size prism that's spooled up with 0.10 millimeter jig silk. One of my favorite tactics for searching for fish in canals is by jigging. So using a soft bait such as a shad, creature bait or curl tail and rigging that on a jig head and then casting out, letting it fall to the bottom and then hopping it back along the bottom until it gets back to my feet. It's a great tactic that works for all species, pike, perch, zander, even chub too. Well, just as I was talking to you about how effective jigging is, I actually just had a bite right in the margins. So I've just made a, a quick cast back out there just to see if the fish will take again. I'll have one more cast and then if not, I'll change lure and change tactic as well and hopefully it might help me catch it. I've already tried quite a few different lures today, but I've caught both pike and also had a couple of other takes too on the mini fry, which is seven centimeters. It's a great lure because it's got a big profile and it's also got a fairly thick paddle tail, which creates a lot of movement and vibration in this colored water, which is gonna help the fish find the lure easier. But I've had two takes now where I've, I've, I've missed them. I haven't hooked into the fish, so I'm gonna have another change now. I'm gonna scale down to something a little bit smaller, something a little bit more bite size, and hopefully the next bite I get, I'll be able to get in the net. Another very effective type of lure that can be worth trying on the canals are crankbaits. You don't tend to see so many people using crankbaits on canals now, mainly because, you know, there are other methods like jigging that can work very well, especially when you're Texas rig soft baits that allow you to fish over snags without the fear of losing as much gear. But in the right areas, crankbaits can be a really devastating tactic. There are various different types of crankbaits. So you've got floating crankbaits, suspending ones, and sinking models too. The model I've got on at the moment is the Salmo Rattling Hornet, which is a floating crankbait and it dives to around five or six foot. So the way I'm fishing this is by cranking it down after I've cast out, and after a few reel turns, the lure will start bumping along the bottom. Now, when it starts to do that, I just pause it, let it float up for two or three seconds, and then continue my retrieve until it bumps the bottom again. And basically, you're almost fishing it a bit like a jig. So it's almost got that sort of hopping motion along the bottom. The Rattling Hornet's a good choice for fishing in coloured water like this because not only has it got a really wide wiggle that's giving off tons of vibration, but it's got a really loud rattle and that sound is helping fish find the lure in this really murky water. Floating crankbaits are a great choice, but don't rule out sinking crankbaits either. So one of my favourite crankbaits for fishing on rivers and canals is the Salmo Sparky Shad, which is sinking. It's got quite a unique shape to it. It's quite unlike any other crankbait I've seen, actually. It's got a very angled shape to it, but it's also got a very loud rattle, similarly to the rattling hornet. But because it's sinking, I have to fish it a little bit differently. So the way I'll fish this is cast out, leave it for about five seconds or so, so it just gets down a little bit, and then I'll just twitch it pause it for a second, twitch it, pause it for a second, and basically fish it on like a stop-start retrieve. You don't want to let it sink too far down though, otherwise it will get close to the bottom, and that's going to increase your chances of hooking into a snag. But what a sinking crankbait does is it allows you to fish a little bit differently from a floating crankbait, a different kind of retrieve, and a different kind of retrieve can often be what's needed to convince fish to take your lure. Well, in the last half hour or so, the wind's dropped and it feels like it's got a lot warmer. And I think it's made a bit of a difference because in the last few minutes, I've just had a couple of bites 
and one of them has turned out to be this perch. Um, it's a re really chunky little fish, this one. It took a Xander Pro Shad, rigged on a 3.5 gram jig head. I was just hopping it on the, along the bottom. I actually bumped into a snag on my first cast and I just shook the lure out of the snag and as it was falling, bang, I had a proper take and it turned out to be this perch. Well, the temperature's really warming up now, so much so I've actually had to take my jacket off in the last hour or so. I wish I could say the same about the fishing, but unfortunately it's been tough going so far. So, as the day's gone on, obviously it's got warmer, the boat traffic's also in... Ooh, I'm not sure if I had a tape then. I'm just gonna keep retrieving. I'm just going to make another cast back over that direction. Anyway, as I was saying, as the day's gone on, the boat traffic's increased. And as the boat traffic increases, the colour of the water starts to change. So this morning, the canal was relatively clear. Um, we had a few inches of visibility. It wasn't too coloured. But now that a few more barges have been through and the water's started to turn chocolatey, I've had to change to using brighter colours. So at the moment I've got a Xander Pro Shad on in Lemon Tiger. Um, other colours like Fire Tiger, Hot Tiger and White would also be good choices in these kind of conditions as well. Basically what you're aiming for is to help your lure stand out as much as it can in this really murky water. Another reason I've put the Xander Pro Shad on is because it's got a fairly big profile and it's also got a fairly thick paddle tail to it as well so that's going to cause more vibration and displace more water as it swims. Another one of my favourite tactics for fishing on canals is a drop shot rig so this is especially effective when you've found a shoal of fish or if you want to fish really tight to the margins like I'm doing here so you can either cast out to the other side and fish it similarly to a jig by keeping the rod tip up and dragging the drop weight along the bottom. You don't really have to impart that much movement into the lure, just that dragging effect will enable that lure to swim around and give it a really unique look and give it a presentation unlike any other really. You can fish it vertically by walking along the bank like I'm doing here or you can cast along the bank instead. But I like to walk along the bank like this because it allows me to fish it really, really slowly. You'll notice that I'm standing a fair way back from the bank as well. This is because if I'm standing closer to the bank, then I'm more likely to spook the fish. So by standing away, I'm not creating as much noise and I'm not gonna put any fish off that are sitting by the bank. Canals are often a lot shallower than most rivers and a lot of gravel pits and lakes that I fish. So I often fish a much shorter drop shot rig. Often in the margins, you're fishing in just two or three foot of water, if that. So I like to shorten my rig right down. So there's a very short distance between the hook and the drop bait. Sometimes I go as short as two or three inches even. But at the moment, I've got it set up for about four inches. When I'm jigging soft baits in murky water like this, what I often like to do is to double jig the lure. So I hop it, then hop it again very quickly. And basically that helps the lure fall down and gives it a little bit more time to fall down to the bottom. And that helps for a few different reasons. One of those is that it gives the soft bait more time to swim from side to side. And the other reason is that it gives the fish a little bit more time to see the soft bait as it's falling down too. And also, giving it that extra little jig just gives the, the lure a little bit more vibration that can hopefully help you get a few more bites on the day.
Well, it's been a great day weather-wise. The fishing hasn't been easy, but it's been nice to catch a few fish on a variety of different tactics. It makes it a lot more interesting than just sticking to the one tactic all day. But I really enjoy exploring canals with the lure rod. They're not often big fish that you catch, but it's all about getting bites really and having a bit of fun. So hopefully after watching this video, you can try out some of these techniques on your local canal. 